Okay, good. So, um, we talked about uh, um, uh, void pointers being pointers that they don't have any uh, type attached to them. Therefore, you can pass any type of address to them. And for th and we converted the the mem type that we had over there, uh, the, the copy mem that we had, uh, um, and uh, with the, the one that we wrote before this is the character and, and converted it to uh, a void pointer copy memory. And uh, um, it it looked nice and good. But if you compile this uh, on a strict compiler, then you're going to get problem uh, with these casts that we have. So it would be much better if we actually converted this to uh, the, the templated casts that we have. So um, instead of having the uh, um, character uh, uh, um, casts um, to be done C, C, C style cast of the pointers, we can use the templated cast. So instead of having, let me just actually copy it over here. Well, that's not the one. This is the one we have. So, where is it? The very first thing is instead of having this this type of copying, what we need to do is to have something like <coughs> character pointer. Uh, so let's call it uh, C destination. So that's going to be the character one, and I'm going to put over here static cast cast for character pointer and then the destination and then we're gonna have character pointer uh, says a C source as we mentioned will be a static cast of character constant character const character const character pointer of the source and then use this one instead so uh, this is the the safest one to use so C destination character destination and character so you just needed to mention this as you see all right so exactly the same thing but we are actually using the constraint casts over here uh, questions on this? All right. So, why cons? Why why this const? Why this templated cast? Why do we use this? Anybody know that? Why do we actually use this? What what is the difference of using this and the other one? Wilson, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so for for so for generic pointers, in other words, void pointers, uh, in order to actually like access the Oh no! Actually, hold on a second. Um, so yeah, if you have to, if, for those like, if you want to actually access like whatever it is, right? Um, you have to actually cast the the uh, the thing the thing that you're that you pointed to to like whatever you want. Um, as for the characters symbol, that's like the smallest that uh, we use that because like we use, it's the smallest um thing memory to that it's, it ha has the lowest like bytes in memories. That's very fine. So this is very like, fine. this so is this what is it means. Like, this is what it means. It's very fine and good and, and, good and uh, bad. But my uh, question is, but my question is, why not just use a regular? Why not just use a regular cast? Because why static cast? Why static cast? Static cast. Anyone? Oh. Anyone? Okay. Reason is that. Is, is it? I'm, I'm gonna go. Oh, I was go gonna ahead, guess. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, um, did it have to do with basically class inheritance and whatnot? If there is something that I'm just guessing, I'm just guessing because I can't remember. Go ahead. Oh, okay. okay. So it's either I forget it was either dynamic casting or static casting had to do with the inheritance and making sure you're getting the right type. Yeah, yeah. So, so let, let me let put everybody at ease. Uh, the difference is that in here you are actually specify your intention and tell to talk you, you tell to the compiler what your intention of this cast is and if the cast because cast 
is a dangerous thing you are literally uh, manually changing the type of something that's crazy when you think about it and uh just a second sorry So what I was saying over here was that uh, um, you state your intention over here because casting is something uh, uh, intentionally changing the type of software. So you're telling to the compiler that I want to do a static, sta static cast between two relative types in this case. So if it is not, the compiler is going to stop you. So you tell to compile what type of a cast you want to do if the, s the source of the cast and the destination of a cast are not a match to what you want to do then the compiler will stop you that's the reason that's that's what we call type safety which is essentially uh, m making sure that you what you want is what you uh, wh what you want to get is ex um, how do I how do I exp explain this uh, make sure that uh, um, you are getting what you want and not a surprise that's all okay so that's the reason you have these type of things and the fourth cat type of cast we talked about in op244 what they are if that thing is not a match so if the destination and a destination pointer a c destination pointer are not candidates for a static cast the compiler is going to complain and stop you and you know something is wrong so you fix it um, uh, any questions on this Omar. Yeah, I just want to clarify. So when we're doing the related types, we had to do the static cast and we had to specify a static class to let the compiler catch us. And if we wanted to do unrelated types, we would do the dynamic casting and we would uh, reinterpret cast specify that. that. And reinterpret cast is yeah. the... Uh, reinterpret, right, is the reinterpret. Okay. Yes, and in, in, in case in, in through hierarchy of inheritance, that's dynamic cast, up cast, okay. down cast. And right. the uh, constant cast removes the constant ness in two four. Yeah, the constant. Explain why it's like that, and hopefully everybody remembers. Oh yeah, because some libraries require that because they were assumed to have the right casting type for const, but they didn't, and you had to re you had to do that. I no, think no, there's that's not the, uh, there is more to it. Oh, okay. Like uh, the example that I gave in class in OP two four four was that we had a function. Uh, that was printing the class and because by standard anything that prints and I'm sorry I I tell to students do not call me when they are busy and the professors are calling me now <laughs> okay but yeah so <laughs> my apologies uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, w like for example we have a class and we have a print function by default print function is a constant function right Omar yes okay so what if you want to know how many times you printed something? Uh, I see, I see. Okay. Um, so what you do, you create a variable, a counter inside the class, but because your function is static, everything inside, sorry, your function is constant, everything inside your class becomes constant. Yeah. Therefore, you create a pointer, then you cast the address of the constant thing, and then you can actually change that, yada, yada, and it goes from there. Okay, okay. All right. Are we okay with this, everyone? Hopefully. Yeah, we are okay. I'm not going to ask this again because we are staying on this thing for too long. That's the difference between 345 and 0244. We can't just pass topics. Damn thing, it just sticks. All right, so this one is. Uh, what do I call it? Um, uh, a uh, copy mem with. Static cast dot cpp. <coughs> I didn't even compile it. I don't know if it's gonna. Yeah, hopefully it works. <laughs> Anyways, uh, goes over there, so we don't need this anymore. 
and the other one was uh, this but yeah the other one was uh, uh, L values and R values and we gave you the example of a function returning uh, uh, a reference and we said L values essentially what you can have at the left side of the thing and R value is the one that you can have at, at left side and right side and R value is the one that you can only have at right value uh, R values are usually uh, temporary values that their lifetime is, is about to end it's at the end of their lifetime or their life or um, uh, or their literal values so mm, in this case we talked about literal values so we put over here six and we know six cannot go at left uh, and functions can't go at left either so I cannot put value as left because value is returning just a regular thing but a tax value because it's returning a reference of an op uh, an entity that is scope is available over here it's simply it's it's uh, it's not going to die that's what the uh, um, Text va that makes the text value uh, a, a left value, so I can actually put it at the left side of the assignment operator. So that was that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, any? Uh, are, uh, are we okay with this? Finally, at the end, we explained that you can actually detect if something that is coming in is a temporary one or not uh, um, and that is with uh, when you put two ampersands over here uh, this type of reference detects that the a that you are having over here is a is an actually an r value so that is an r value this is an l value and when you call these two displays you will notice that when it's being called it's not going to call this one because this is not my program my apologies uh, this is the program so stop it copy yeah so as, as I was saying when it runs <coughs> the one that is an L value goes to the one with the reference and the other one is going to go to the one that has the R value reference over here and that's that um so yeah so with uh, two ampersands we can detect that one are we okay with this all right so we stood right over there and that was it now what the uh, what let me see what else we need to cover over here so another thing that i can show you with the l value is this so assume we have uh, a name class okay and the name class that we have has the following has the following uh method so it has a constructor that I don't want to use the IO stream so um, I wrote a few things in here that kind of exposes you to codes that you might see here and there especially C programmers old, old school C programmers do stuff like this a lot so for example this is SDR len um, this is uh, SDR copy uh, and things like that so I didn't want to have the standard input output or the C string coming in so I did it this way anyway so um, this name of mine has a value it's, it holds it dynamically and I have a constructor that uh, receives uh, uh, either null or uh, um, uh, either null or a value to set the name to it initializes NPTR over here uh, to uh, null pointer we're gonna do it like this uh, yeah we could have done it here because which is this but it doesn't make any difference uh, so I add it over there all the time just to make sure that it's gonna be null at uh, any time so we can actually remove this one and this one so that is null by, by default uh, it sets the uh, um, the name dynamically and then over here it copies the name di uh, dynamically as a copy constructor and uh, then we have over here uh, uh, a destructor and we have a print statement that is printing it now when I'm overloading the 
O stream, this is what I'm going to do. So I'll go with the standard uh, insertion operation that we have for O stream. And in here, I'm going to do exactly what I do all the time. So return n.print to actually print it. Okay, but what I'm going to do, and I'm going to pass OS over here, obviously. But what I'm going to do with the, the difference over here is in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, OS. I'm going to actually uh, print over here L value. So essentially, this is the left value that is being printed over here because it's a constant reference. And then for the next one, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the exact same thing, but instead of passing that, I'm going to pass over here an R value. So as you see over here, this R value of mine shows if the object is being passed is actually an R value. So um, if I uh, create uh, something like this, if I say over here, if I say over here, name, say A is Jack, and then right over here, uh, um, name B is set to A. And then in here, I'm going to say name C is set to name uh, John, something like this. OK, and then we're going to so so just let's let's just analyze these first. Uh, it has nothing to do with this one. I'm just going to analyze this one. Uh, what is being called over here? What is being called over here? There we go. What is going what is what is being called over here? I asked the question and I post a, a, a name but I don't get a reply. Uh, where are you? Oh, as usual, the mic the microphone doesn't work. Please people, when you Log in. Check your microphones. Make sure they work, please. Um, I I do not I do not want the classes to be online, but we are forced to do it. So please have your microphones set before you start, so you can actually talk. I would really appreciate that. But anyway, so this is initialization at the moment of creation. Therefore, this is actually a constructor that accepts a one argument that is called Jack. The second one is again initialization at the moment of a construction. Therefore. Uh, a copy constructor is going to be called. And in here, I, as you see, I have, yes, Winston. Um, okay, so for line 49, right, is a copy, is, is, is it also a copy constructor? Like it makes like the, makes Jack, like, um, it just takes Jack and then afterwards like makes like a- Not at all. Makes like a- Assignment at the moment assignment creation, at the is, a creation a, is a call one for argument a constructor. one argument constructor. So Forward. that's like, so that's a one argument constructor. Okay, so, uh, give me one minute. I'm just gonna take a picture of that. Oh, all right, sure. thanks. Okay, sure, go ahead. Okay, sure, go ahead. Okay, everything's good. Okay, so which means if it comes over here, it literally goes to the constructor, accepts one value, and the value is over here uh, is the pointer of Jack. And then goes over here, copies everything, and we're done. So M value will actually point to Jack. All right. The other one is assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. That argument happens to be uh, the uh, another A. So copy constructor will be called, which will, we're going to come over here and it's going to go up. And then the copy constructor is called, as you see, and it's going on. Now, in here, I am ha I'm creating uh, a copy of a nameless object. So this nameless object, uh, so it's assignment at the moment of creation at right side, I have a nameless object. If I actually call this one, you will see that the copy constructor was not called. It's actually, this is the constructor for the, for the, for the name over here. So that's the first thing, so John gets created and then John gets created, it comes out, and as you see, oh, wait a minute, my apologies, one more time. 
So it it uh, the, the the regular constructor is called, and then after that, as you see, it comes out, and no constructor is called for C. So please be advised. That this is something extremely important that we need to understand. It that is nameless objects are never copied. So this name, like I literally walk through it in front of you. So in here, I'm going to say C out after name creations. So if I run the program one more time, just to, uh, to s why is it going to the end one more time? There we go. Yeah, so this we know that regular constructors, we know that is copy constructor, but when you get in here, this is what happens. So again, it goes to the constructor of uh, nameless John. It creates it using a uh, one argument constructor with John because that's how it is. And as soon as it ends, it wants to copy that, but it sees this is a nameless object that is just about to die. Then why kill it and pass it and copy it? I simply name this C and I'm done with it. And that's what happens. So nothing else will be called. The constructor is not called. Line number 51 and line number 41 look and work the same. Are we okay with this? So this is actually a feature of C++. C++ does this to save time because it just doesn't make sense that I create a nameless object. I copy the nameless object, then I kill the nameless object. If I create a nameless object and I want to copy it, I'm just going to assume its identity and be done with it. Yes, uh, Iman or Sayed. What do I call you, Iman or Sayed? Yeah, you can call me Iman. Okay. Iman, oh, Iman, <coughs> can, I, can I ask a question about the R value argument? Yes. Okay, so You're talking about this I don't one? understand. Sorry, what? You're talking about line 43, this one? Like any R value argument, okay. like not only this one. Um, so I don't understand how how a function that accepts a R value argument can be called that, like can be called with an L value. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'll, I'll explain. Let the time comes. I'll I'll let you know. It can. Okay. It. I'll, it. We'll get to it. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. It, step by step, okay. baby steps. You'll get to it and you'll see exactly how it's going to get called. Okay. okay so. So we are down to this one and we understand this, right? So now, um, I'm sorry I didn't answer your question, but we'll get to it. So uh, what I will do over here is this. I'm going to uh, say C out. I'm going to put over here, say, uh, A. and C out B, and then go C out Iman. Okay, so now if I run this, you will see that when it comes through uh, function selections, when it gets to these, it calls the first one, and calls the second one, and when it comes in here, it went to the constructor, sorry. It actually calls the one with R value because this is a nameless object. It doesn't have any uh, reference attached to it and therefore is an R value. And uh, that's what happens. Uh, are we okay with this? All right. Yes, we'll see. Um, so remember when you said 51, like, assumes the identity of, like, the, uh, temporary object that has John, right? Mm -hmm. Um, does that mean, like, C becomes, like, that temporary object, and in a way, like, it will also have, like, the name John? It means this it means state, this state, state 51, state 51 mm -hmm. doesn't make any difference with doesn't this. Doesn't make any difference with this. Okay, got it. All right. All right. Wait, 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 actually, could you, could you um, actually, no, 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 I'll, I'll, it's okay, I'll just take a picture like that. 
Okay. Right, thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. So that's that. Uh, yes, Yvonne. So in line 54, you're, you're, you want to print the object A, and I don't understand why the first operator is called, because like A is also an R value. Am I right? No. It's not? No, like, I can go, I can go A is set to B, can't I? Yeah, but you can also say B is set to A, like it yes, is also you can an, say B is set to A, perfectly correct. They are, they both can be L values. Yeah, so it has to be only R values, right? So like all, it can't see, be no values. Remember, L value can, can stand in both sides. Yeah. R value can stand only at right side. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, okay, got it. I'm going to go through the diff like definitions in detail later on about this. Yes, well said. Okay, so just to make sure, um, basically, line 51, name C calls the regular constructor. So, this so happens? This happens? Yep. That's a regular constructor, correct? That's a regular constructor, correct? Yeah. Yep. And it's a temporary name of the subject, And it's a temporary correct? name of the subject, correct? Yep. And by putting and by assignment at putting the moment assignment of creation, you are essentially saying, I want this to be a copy, of the, a copy of the temporary name of the subject, right? Okay, so the therefore, copy is there. Therefore, because of the rule of, of, the rule of nameless, nameless, nameless objects, co never, nameless get copy, objects never get copied, that's not going to get copied. Yeah. That's not going to get copied. It's, it's just going to okay. assume its identity. It's just going to assume its identity. Okay, so basically, so basically the, the regular constructor is called for name C. Yes. Yes. Okay, got it. Thanks. But basically, no. <laughs> That's not happening. So this is what's happening. It creates a temporary nameless. You got that? Got that? Yeah. And then it wants and then to it pass wants this to, to pass copy this constructor. To copy constructor. Yep. It sees that over it here it's supposed that to receive an L value. Receive an L value. What yeah. we have over here is an R value, which yeah. means this is has which this has to this get is, has, this has to get destroyed afterwards. Yeah. It says I'm not gonna do it that. Says, I'm not gonna do that. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the so I'm gonna take the identity of this one and call it C. But okay. at the end, but yes, basically, end, yes, basically, end result is exactly end like result line is exactly like line forty. Which means the con regular constructor gets called. Yes. It, yes. The rate of okay. has, has been called already. Has been called already. <laughs> there is nothing else to be called. Oh, okay. Nothing else to be called. Okay, but not for C, but for John. Yeah, C is nothing here. Yeah, the, the, name nothing here. the name C. of this one will be called. The name of this one will be called. Okay. All right. All right. So, what I was another thing that I want to say, like if I have something like this, for example, uh, void prn name, and in here I'll go name n and in here i'm going to say n dot print so this is receiving a name by value uh, or we'll see out sorry this is receiving a name by value if i write over here c out not c out prn name and in here i'm going to say name wilson If I do something like this, then what do I have? Oh, I'm sorry. What am I doing? Yeah. So when I do something like this, the same scenario happens, Wilson. So a temporary nameless object gets created and it's being passed by value to PRN name, correct? Therefore, huh? the copy Therefore, constructor of copy N, N needs to be called to call to do this name thing. To do this name thing. Mm -hmm. Which will never be called. Which will never be because called. It's because object. it's already a nameless object. Because it's already a nameless object. Got it? Got it? Yeah. So right. because the function, we know, I explained how the functions are called. Because the function is called like this. The scenario will be identical to what we have at line 55. 
okay all right that's that one all right next thing so this is what do I call this and P I'm gonna say L value and R value Whew. okay now what is this oh yeah 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 it is correct I am thinking of Yeah, sorry, I am. Um, let me just actually turn this on because I can't see your facial expression. At least you can see mine. So when I'm thinking, you don't think I'm like, quiet. What the hell is doing? So um, uh, I am trying to see um, where to go down to here. I can actually go directly to moves. And then after going to moves, then come back and teach pointer to pointers and and things like that. But there are a few things because th there are a few more topics to go through that are very important. Uh, but at the same time, your workshop is up and we are one lecture behind uh, I better postpone the workshop I don't want I don't want to go off topic so let me I'll I'll postpone I'll move that date of the workshop to to later so we'll be fine anyways uh, never mind uh, so let's talk about uh, pointers to pointers and understand what they are so um, Let's say um, how do I explain this? <laughs> let's say um, let's have something like this. I'm gonna go void set um, uh, set to zero and in here I'm gonna put integer pointer some value so how do we set it to zero we're gonna say target of val is set to zero are we okay with this okay and we know that if I wanted it instead of having a pointer we can have something like a reference to go like this and then write integer reference val so I'm not gonna bother with the pointer notation and they work work perfectly the this uh, the, the difference is that if I have over here integer a 10 and integer b 20 if I want to actually um, use the first one, it's going to be set to zero address of A, but for the other one, I just need to say set to zero and I'll put over here B. So val over here becomes a new name for B. It's going to be set to zero. Over here, the address of A is passed to val. Val is pointing to A. Target of val becomes A. A becomes zero. Life is beautiful and we are done with this. So I can go C out. Um, a 
and CLP. And as a result, they're both zero and so on and so forth. So we know everything is fine. Are we okay with this? All right. Let's say I have a function over here or I have a, an array over here integer a uh, integer array a r I'm gonna call it uh, say I have five integers in them and they are 10 20 30 40 and 50 so this is this is my array of integers and then I have a pointer over here integer pointer P that holds po points to the same place as the array so in here I can say target of uh, I can say P uh, yeah target of P C out um, let me take these out I don't want to clutter the I think so let me just uh, so this is pointer and reference from 244 okay and let's go back over here So now I do not need these and I have an array. I just want it to be nice and clear. So in here I'll go, I'll go target of P is set to, uh, becomes target of P. I'll, I'll, I'll show target of P and it, it, what is displayed over here is 10 there is absolutely no problem with that it, are we okay with this okay some of you are a little late to answer um, probably your full full screen and you don't need but uh, but I did a poll but yeah anyways so now, if I go P++ and I print the exact same statement, what is the output of line 15, ladies and gentlemen? What is the output? What is the output of line 15? <laughs> Uh, sorry, at line 8. What is the output of line 8? It's amazing. Not a single person down to this point. The half of you didn't answer, but those who are answering are actually answering correctly, which is good. And seriously, half of you did not answer. Just to show you, the number of people who responded to this thing is, does it say how many? So 16 people answered and they all answered correctly and we are 28 people in class. So you see what I'm talking about when I say half of you didn't answer. So yeah, it is 20 because it advances forward. So essentially what we uh, had at this point was that the pointer P over here if this is the pointer P, so if this is the pointer P, pointer P was actually, because it was holding the address of AR, is it was pointing to 10. And that's why when I say target of P, 10 got printed. As soon as I did P++, 1 was added to the address, which essentially means the size of an integer, and therefore it actually pointed to the second one. And now 20 got printed. 
Are we okay with this? I have to change the question because it's going to take long. I'm going to see over here. Answer. So now what I want to do is this, a very simple thing that I want to write over here. What I want to do is this. I want to do this P plus plus. <laughs> Not that one. I want to do this P plus plus inside the function. So in here I'm going to say void go to next element. So it is an integer pointer. I'll put integer pointer. And in here, uh, integer pointer, I'm going to call it PTR. So in here, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, uh, and in here, I'm going to say PTR plus plus to go on to the, to the next uh, step. And in here, I'm going to say, go to next element. And I'm going to put P right over here. And what is the output of line 15, people? Pay attention. It's a trick question. What is the output of line 15? Keep going, people. This is your question for the quiz that you're going to do. So think about it. All right. So j just to show you what's going on over here. So I'm going to publish so you can actually see the stats over here. If you look at the stats over here, you will see that uh, 12 people said 20, 9 people says 30, and one person, one person said 10. And the answer over here would be, when you run this, P holds the address of AR, 10 printed. I add 1 to the address, it goes to next element, 20. Now the address that is yada, 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 C, as you see, it's 8C over here, that points to 20 goes co gets copied right into ptr then i add one to ptr and now it is address 30. but the problem is that ptr is a local variable i just passed the address by value to ptr so it became 30 but ptr became 30 not p therefore when we come back that p there is dead p still remains the one that it was and is pointing to 20 therefore it remains 20. It's not going to go one further. Do we understand this? Oh, you're actually typing yes? Thank you. <laughs> Wrong poll, but laugh. You can, you can answer it, can't you, Irish? All right. Can you explain one more time? Yes, I can. All right. <laughs> Wrong poll. It's not wrong, Paul. You're lazy. All right. So, one more time. So, when we are coming over here, what's happening over here? P is pointing to where AR is pointing, which is element number one. Therefore, when I say target of P, 10 is printed. Are we okay with this? Who said? Uh, explain one more time. Oh, sorry. 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 Um, uh, who said explain one more time? Who was it? Yeah, I, I got to the point of yeah, yeah, the song. That, I 13, just but I, I didn't get, I didn't get from a line uh, like 14. I just 14 want you to hold the, the microphone because I want to I talk to you to, to see if you get it or not. Okay, so we are okay, okay. To, over here, right down to this point. Yeah. When you add 1 to P, the size of the whatever the address is, the size of it is added. So it goes to the next one. Actually, it's a good idea to do this. Like, Give me a second void p 
PRN address. And in here, I'm going to say integer pointer PTR. And I'm going to say C out uh, unsigned PTR. So in here, I'm going to say PRN address. And I'm going to print P. And I'm going to keep doing that as after every and each thing that I have done. Copy, 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 and then go. OK, so let's do it again. I'll start it again. So it comes in. The address is 04, as we see over here. And at that address, the value 10 is sitting. Now I'm adding 1 to the address. And when I print it, you see the address becomes 08, which means size of an integer is 4. So it goes to the next one. When I print it, it actually prints 20. Now I'm going to go to PRN address. Oh, I went to go, ah, shoot, went too quickly. Sorry about that. One more time. So it, go, it gets to PR and address. Sorry, now the address is 96 and 00. zero. Same thing, four, four bytes further. Now in here, I'm going to add a PR and address. PTR. Not there. That's going to be an endless loop. And now let's continue. So now it goes to uh, go to next element. Yeah, 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 yeah. One more time. Still there is why. Why? Uh, Professor, oh. I think you have to oh. put void PRN address like before uh, go yeah, to I next know, element. I forgot, I know, I know, I forgot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There we go. Okay, so that goes over here. It's printed and comes over here. We go to this point. So it's 20, becomes 24. Then we go up. Now it adds 1 to the address. And as you see, it actually becomes 28. So PTR is increased. But PTR is a copy of P. Just, again, uh, you should not give pointers extra credit, as I told you. It's just variables. Just instead of integer pointer, put over here long. If you had a long and you had a long p over here, so the value would have been passed. If you added one to the variable, the, the, the thing outside will not change. So if we come out over here and print the address, we will see that it remained what it was before, and therefore it's on 20. Are we good now? Mm, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, good, okay, yeah, or okay, yeah. Um, I don't want to ask it anymore. Are you okay with this? Uh. 70%. 70%. Okay. So let me just put it this way. This go to next element, instead of this, I'm going to say go to next number. And in here, I'm going to say long num. And I go num plus plus. Okay. If I write over here, say integer n is equal to 30 and i'll go go to next number and i pass over here n and i see out n what's gonna what is it going to print in n the long number the long number it's gonna print oh sorry long it's gonna print 30 because 30 gets copied over here adds one to it becomes 31 but this long number will die in here it's not going to change the n are we okay with this mm. oh okay okay it's the exact same thing with go x and look at this n p exactly the same thing copy of mm -hmm. p goes to ptr ptr is added by one nothing happens to p okay that's mm -hmm. that okay all right so to Thank fix you. you were saying I said thank you. Yeah. To fix this problem, we need to do the exact same thing that we we have to do this go this number. To make this thing actually work, I have to make this a pointer and they say over here change the target of num plus plus. Therefore, when I actually want to change it, 
if I say over here long n set to 30 now I can say go to next number and I put address of n instead and now if I go see out n we will see that 31 is printed so when it comes in here when it runs it instead of the number the long n I'll pass the address of it into num so num was going to point where n is pointing which is 30 then I add one to the target of num becomes 31 then I come out 31 is printed everybody's okay with this <laughs> So if I want the same thing happen for the pointer that I want to advance the next one, I have to do the exact same thing. I added a star over here, then I say target of num++, so I'm going to add a star over here, and I'm going to say target of ptr++, and in here I'm going to say target of ptr, so it becomes it becomes the type over here becomes integer pointer pointer PTR so PTR points to an integer pointer PTR points to an integer pointer because of that in here instead of advanced going to next I'm gonna pass the address of the pointer to it and now if the if that one is printed we will see it advance to the next one so if i run the program now i'm going to comment these because we don't want to see those okay so it comes over here and now it prints the address prints the value adds one to it prints the value and uh, pr prints the address and prints the value it's 24 and 28 now it's gonna pass the address of pointer p to the integer pointer pointer ptr so therefore it comes over here and now it adds value over here which is it's going to add one to the target of ptr therefore uh, uh, the ptr in here will change and we print the address it's going to be 32 and when we come out it's going to remain 32 and it's going to be the next one are we okay with this oh professor a question yes yes go ahead um so we we could just pass by reference as well right yeah, yeah that's the next thing i'm gonna do okay so okay. yeah no, they're not pass by reference pass by integer pointer reference yeah 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 so instead of doing this you could have done this so this becomes c plus plus integer pointer reference Okay, so doing so, if I actually come over here and do this one more time, I can say go to next element and pu put P over here this time and print it one more time. And that is going to actually work perfectly too. So the first one in here is going to go to the address and do the address and print the thing that I wanted which is very fine and next one goes but this P is P's reference is gonna go so ref becomes a new name for P and it advances everything and as you see 40 is gonna get printed all right uh, are we okay with this <laughs> Now, to drive everybody absolutely nuts, let's say 
I didn't want to do it over here. I wanted to do it in another function. So in here, I'm going to say yet go to next one level higher. And in here, I pass address of PTR. You know, if I do that, then I have to come over here and create the next one. So what I'm receiving over here is going to be an integer pointer, pointer, pointer PTR. And what I need to add over here is target of target of PTR plus plus and it, the result is going to be the same. So now as you see over here, um, I'm not going to even write anything, I'm not going to bother, but the result is going to be exactly the same thing. So we can actually uh, bring up over here. So it comes down to this and it's past the address of P to an integer pointer pointer and passes the address of that one to an integer pointer 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 <laughs> and target of target of PTR will be added by one and we comes back everything is going to be exactly the same okay are we okay with this now for fun you can actually add another one and go integer pointer 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 over there so it doesn't matter that uh, concept is recursive and pointers work all exactly the same way so now we know what pointers to pointers are why do we need this this is not C++ by the way this is C and why do we need this nonsense it's because sometimes you need to pass the address of a pointer somewhere you need to understand how you're going to get it at the other side uh, and that is why the real syntax of main can also be written as follows you will see in many books they actually write the real syntax of main as integer arc c and character pointer pointer arc b because that's really what it is it is address of uh, address of uh, characters all right um, but that's another story so I'm gonna say over here real CDE real syntax of main with pointer to pointer are we okay down to this point <laughs> So if an array of character is pointed to by a character pointer, an array of character pointers will be a character pointer pointer, and so on and so forth. All right. That's that one. Now we already know all the, the, uh, the aggregate initializations. Um, we've talked about it in OP244. I already taught it, and you guys all know it. For those who are not my students, just just gonna explain a new version. The way of actually initializing is using curly brackets in front of anything you want, so you don't use assignment anymore. Um, and we take that thing out because assignment and um, initialization usually gets confused. So this is a better way to do so to, to do it. So initializing a to five, initializing b to its default value, initializing forty integers to its default value and initializing tw uh, 20 doubles, the first two to this one and the rest or whatever. So this is uh, uh, the new way that we are initializing uh, stuff. Are we okay? All right. I just want to ask, that's for C++ 11 or that's for C and up? Yes. Okay, just making sure which uh, which compilers take that syntax up. Yeah, yeah. You will not, uh, you guys are too young to have a, a C++ that doesn't work with that. <laughs> so let's put it that way, okay? So aggregate uh, initialization. 
initializations. Let's see. Okay, so we know that one. I will now uh, uh, see also because of all these reference business and uh, um, um, uh, types of uh, things that you need to go through. It has a new type of for loop that we call it range based loop. A range based loop, what it does, it's uh, uh, like if you have uh, programmed in other languages, pro the other languages have a loop called for each. In C, C++, they don't call it for each, they just call it for loop, but they call it a range based for loop. So if I have over here something like integer a, and in integer a I'll put, uh, um, what do I put? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Okay. When I do something like this, then I, then I can simply say for integer reference uh, element uh, in A. And in here I can say C out. Um, what do I do? C out. Uh, um, unsigned just to show you the ad so so you see this e element becomes the reference of first one second third fourth and it keeps going until it hits the end so i'm going to say unsigned uh unsigned just to show you address of element okay and then i'm gonna do something like this and i'm gonna put the element itself and go to new line and it goes like this. So when we run this, it it works the exact same. Stop. It works the exact same way like a like a regular loop, as you see. Are we okay with this? All right. Now this is designed mostly for what we in future we're gonna see as collections. Collections are. Um, arrays of things and sometimes it becomes so complicated that you really don't know uh, what is the type of the element that is inside this collection so it becomes very crazy if you have such a case you don't need to worry about using an integer instead of doing that you can simply say for auto let's call it e over here and it's going to be exactly the same. So, so now, because you are saying element of the array, automatically gets the type of the element of the array and auto turns to that one. Therefore, E becomes an integer and it works the exact same way as the other one. Um, uh, questions? Uh, are we okay with this? We'll see. Oh, no, no, no. I put no as and I don't have any questions. Oh, you have any questions? Oh, you have any questions? Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's that one. That's uh, range based for loop. We're going to see later on. But, but uh, careful with this. Um, can't do this remember arrays are arrays size is only known in a local variable so if it's a regular primitive array you can do it only in the same scope you cannot pass an array somewhere else and hope that it's going to have the value this type of an array is a primitive array, array it doesn't know what is its size later we'll see you can do that with collections because collections are not primitive they actually have a size and they can actually just find its size uh, so this is an error. Yes. Okay. So just to make sure, um, if we're using the range-based for loop, we cannot pass an array to the function, right? Yeah. In the function. Yeah. You cannot pass yeah, an array to a function array and to a use the range-based for, range for loop over there. Range for loop over there. Okay. But in the future, we'll see we're gonna have 
smart array smart array is the wrong thing to say we have compound collections uh, com composite co collections that are that they 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 uh, they know their size and then you can use it over them but for primitive arrays you can't uh, uh, would you be able to use a uh, fat corner with uh, this four four range so the, a pointer, pointer that actually has what oh uh, so like it's a, a fat pointer someone it's basically a pointer that gives you the size of the actual memory allocated to where it's pointing no to so it holds that is. Oh, never okay. heard of this. this is the first time I'm oh, yeah. hearing something like that. Fat oh. pointer? Yeah, that's what it is. Fat pointer. It's basically a pointer that Cobalt takes the has the address and the size of the memory at the address. That I don't believe such a thing exists in C plus plus. Let me just check. Fat pointer? Use F A T fat? Yeah, F A T fat. I that's what I learned. I've used that a lot of times. A lot of people have told me it's not like uh, I. I, I thought other people knew about it, but that's how I it was always described to me. It's a pointer that holds the size. Uh, okay, well, my dear, a, what you're doing is a library that you have to add to it. It's it's not a standard C. No, I can see it. Uh, okay, okay. It says over here, I just see, Cello is a fat pointer library. It lets you create pointers which are tagged with additional runtime information. I don't yeah. think that's in C++. No, it's I've, not I've never heard of something like that in my life. So, it's not st it's not standard, no. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it's usually like the reason why I was asked was a lot of times when you want to go okay when you want to pass around an array and actually treat it like an actual array. Yeah, you well, would. Well, well, I'll 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 write a co I'll create a fat pointer for you in the future when we learn a few things. You can okay. actually do that. Okay. You can write the code yourself. You can yeah. create a fat pointer yourself if you want to. Yeah, 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 that's why I just wanted to ask. Yeah, okay, sure. That's all. There is no such thing as fat pointers in C plus and C plus plus. Let's put it like that. All right, but thank you, Omar, for introducing me to fat pointers because I'm fat and it fits me perfectly. Anyways, <laughs> so that's that. So we are. Uh, this is range base. So uh, let me just write it over here so I can't do. Can't do it here since um, AIR is not an array okay it's just a pointer all right so yeah we got I just wrote the code here and I'm gonna, after the class is over, I'm going to write a fat pointer. <laughs> nice, actually, I like it. Yeah, gee. So in here, uh, I'm going to have, uh, what else do we need? We need to have a, um, um, range base for loop. So uh, any questions down to this point? Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do over here talking about, um, uh, another type of structure that we have in, in C that we can use in C++2 is called a union. Now what a union is, is that um, union is exactly like a structure, but the difference between a structure and a union is that um, when you create a structure of three things, and I want you to listen to this carefully, when you create a structure of three things, this is what you get. So it becomes the first thing, and then after that, the second thing comes, and after that, the fourth, the third thing comes. And therefore, this becomes your structure. Are we okay with this? When you create a union, it's bec it becomes a little freaky. What it does is that union does not actually create the variables in sequence. What happens is that 
this member variables inside the rule union overlap they all start at the beginning of the union so essentially this is what happens the first one whoa the first one sits over here the second one sits over here and the third one sits over here so these three they all start at the same place in memory so if you put something in a first one it overrides the second and a third then if you write something in a third one it overrides the first and the second the first and the second so you essentially share the essentially same share of memory for many memory things for me yes wilson yes wilson so that means basically um the amount of memory used to make that union will be basically the highest number the biggest right one. the biggest one okay it's got to be size of the biggest one of which i actually wrote it over here so you see so the vars over here that i created as you see variables it has a double integer and seven characters so if you do size of vars it's going to be eight because this is just eight so if i actually go like this as you see the first one is eight alignment is eight and uh that's the value of the first one and why is it printing a value without initializing it's all garbage hmm. i didn't set anything in it not the, uh, the address not oh the, it's address the of, sorry 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 so yeah so it's printing the address of them so you see the addresses are identical address of a and c are the same so they are sitting at the same place if you set the first one to a double and print it the double value is printed if you set the second one to integer that's printed and if you set the last one to uh, some characters they are all printed and if you print them out you will see that a b c d e f and g are printed but if you come out and print a that you had as that value it's going to be completely garbage and print b it's going to be a completely different value so anything you write overwrite the other ones don't ask me what is used for um it's very difficult to give you a use case for it right now um but later on you will see in business how it's how and why you need to use it whenever let's put it like this whenever you need to look at a piece of memory with different types of filters you create a union as simple as that um are we okay with this use of auto and static what is auto for what is static for we did i talk about uh we talked about uh uh name uh, uh nameless uh classes didn't we did i talk about nameless classes over here the classes that they they don't have a name did we talk about it you said nameless objects but not nameless no, okay, classes okay. so let me just talk about nameless uh uh um classes so you can create nameless classes so for example if i have if i have let's say a class student okay and i want the student to have a first name and a last name okay and that's the only name i want to have a name i don't want to have a class name out there uh, and then instantiate it over here so what i do over here i'm going to go over here struct i'm going to i'm not going to name it anything i'm just going to create a structure and i'm going to say this structure is m name and in here i'm going to say string first string last so now i have a structure over here 
and this structure of mine has a first and a last and if I want to access it mname dot first is the first one mname dot last is the second one so essentially I can create a nameless structure over here and with this nameless structure I want to create uh, I can have a first name and last name, so I don't have to have it out there and do anything with it. And then I'm going to go public over here and continue with whatever I have. Public in here and uh, have whatever I have. Uh, do we understand what, what nameless uh, classes are? I taught you type def and how in C language they did type def. So if I put a type def in front of it, then M names becomes the name of a structure. I don't want that. I want this to be the type and this to be the instance. So you cannot recreate anything out of this one. Okay? But, uh, yeah, you cannot recreate the structure, but uh, um, uh, you can use it as a structure, uh, a, a unique structure that you have inside the student. So these if you are hover uh, over, oh, cool. sorry, professor. If you hover over the variable, we actually it states it as a uh, un unnamed. Yeah. So, so uh, Visual Studio will let you know anytime you have an unnamed class or structure. Yeah, but you, there is a way to create an instance out of it. Um, it's a little nuts, but you can. So. So if I wanted to create another, like I, if I wanted to copy this thing into another structure of the same type uh, for whatever reason, so in here say I have, I have say void foo, I don't know whatever this is. And if I want to create a variable of this thing and do so, like I have two names and I want to swap or something like that, whatever I want to do. So in here you can actually say auto, n is equal to m name so what happens is n of yours actually <laughs> becomes a local variable that you so the auto takes care of that although it doesn't have a name by auto it grabs the type of that one and it sets it to so on and so forth um, um, are we okay with this that's one of the reasons that we have auto for things that they don't have name and we want to actually so that actually brings us to the next thing. So in here, I'm going to say nameless structures, EFGHI, nameless structure. So let's say I want to create a Let's say I want to create a class to trace my code and show debugging information and things like that. If I want to do that, so I'm going to create that class and I want to activate and deactivate it so it shows the tracing information or not so I don't have to um, keep uh, uh, commenting and uncommenting stuff. I want to be able to turn the class off and on and be done with it. So, and this class is only one thing. I don't want to create many instances of it. So, I'm not going to name it anything, and I'm going to call this one a tracer class. So, this class is tracer. It doesn't have a name. Now, in here, I'm going to create a boolean um, trace, and by default, it's not going to show anything. It's not going to trace. It's not going to show the trace, and I'm going to create a public thingy and I'm going to say, uh, and um, what I want to do is uh, set the trace to on and off. So in here, I'm going to say trace void trace. In here, I'm going to say boolean uh, value. And I'm going to set mtrace to value. And I'm going to set it by default to true so if you just say uh, tracer dot trace it means it starts tracing but I want it to have um, I want it to have a cascading effect I want to be able to say trace dot trace dot this and that and go after that if I want to do that I need to return the reference of the current object as I did with all the things that I had. So if I want to say over here, return this, how do I know what is the 
type over here that's where auto comes handy so in here I can say auto reference which means now trace returns the reference of the thing and I can add many functions over here to do whatever I want to do with this tracer of mine so for example I'm going to do uh, operator insertion operator character message I'm going to say if the trace is on see out if the message is null say null string if it's not null print it out and return again that one another insertion operator integer print an integer another insertion operator double print a double character print a character so I have these things so this tracer of mine now becomes a class that I can use to trace things with it so um, I can say over here tracer dot trace so that activates the tracing now in here I'm gonna say I don't know integer a and b and C and I'm going to say A is set to B plus C now I can say over here tracer adding A and B in adding C and B B and C in A okay so doing something like this uh, and uh, let's say go to new line okay um, and then in here I'm gonna say tracer the value is uh, and I can actually add another thing over here so I can I can do something like uh, I'll do it later never mind so I'm gonna say uh, tracer the value is um, what do I do the value is uh, in here I'm gonna go a and go to new line so the tracer of mine now is active and when I run the program it it actually runs the program and traces my code when I want to so the tracing is on and it's gonna say adding B and A and it's gonna say the value is 40 but if I don't want it to be on I simply say over here false or don't initialize it but anyways it comes over here it's false so now the tracer is not going to print any message no debugging messages will be printed so this is a very good use for auto uh, to actually get this stuff out now another thing that I can do over here is uh, creating like for example over here I go backslash and if you want you can have a new line added something like and L um, using a static value of tracer so so in here um, uh, let, let me, no I don't want to go through that forget it so this is the auto of a we'll talk about static stuff in, in another example so uh, that's tracer so I'm gonna say use of IIJ use of auto in here I'm gonna say tracer that tracer actually really comes really handy when you want to test stuff and um, uh, do things like that it really becomes handy um, next thing would be yes 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 go ahead go ahead so Sini, go ahead Uh, type type it's okay yes it cannot be two that's only one unless because I didn't delete the the, the yeah but never mind yes what I'm saying is that it is only one instance you cannot have two yeah
I see that uh, somebody else is typing something. What is the difference between auto and type name? What do you mean by type name? What do you mean by type name? I think he's referring to templates when he used templates. Type yeah, template one. Uh, I, I'm trying to find. I don't. I don't. I. I. I don't even know how they're related to be able to. What is the difference between a cell phone and a mouse? Not a mouse, like a real mouse or a cat. Okay, I. Well, they have nothing to do with each other. Auto. Um, auto is to create yeah. uh, an instance, or reference, or pointer of an already existing type when either the length is too long, like as I mentioned in class, for example, if you have a, a very, um, uh, what should we call it, uh, something like unsigned int, uh, uh, int uh, pointer, something like that, uh, and, and you don't want to keep, to, and you, you put over here PTR, and later on, if you want to create another one out of this one and set it, you simply say auto, um, P is equal to PTR and it grabs this type and and simply creates this one type def is to shorten something forever and reuse it over and over you will find out later on that when we get to templates and stuff sometimes in a template you don't even know what the type of some kind of an element or something is because the template you don't you're not sure that the template is created which what type of what type of a thing in in those scenarios auto becomes really your rescuer because you want to create a temporary value of some element of something that you have no idea what is its type and you want to do something with it that's when auto comes handy so um, uh, I don't think there is any relationship between uh, auto and type def and type name is different still but i think that's what we're talking about type name because when we were using i remember in oop 204 i wasn't in your class but i was in another class you were using uh when we were using and declaring uh, uh a generic type t you would use type name t because we don't know what type is going to be passed through so to find what type that was you would say type name t and then you would automatically assume whatever the type it was that's why i think people are confused as to oh, how so it was something that you used to use as a, a teaching method because there is no type name there is no such a thing what would you like type hmm. i don't i i don't i don't know no it's a, uh, there is no relation between this and the type name extracts the type of something it's 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 it has nothing to do with it um i don't think so uh anyways uh so i'm sorry i didn't get it i don't know how to relate the two <laughs> my apologies all right uh so um we'll we'll talk about all these things later on um in the semester but uh yeah um i'm waiting uh, i see somebody's trying to type and i'm waiting for the message to come up if you are asking a question please quickly type it But anyways, yeah, so back to the question. So again, type name is what we have in a template and uh, uh, to uh, replace the, um, uh, the type of the, the placeholder of the type for the template and uh, the auto uh, recreates a, um, uh, a type out of an already existing type. Let's put it that way. Okay, so that's that. And don't say. 
did I? Let me see, trace it. It's good, okay. The next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Yeah, as I was mentioning, statics uh, um, are very useful to create utility classes. So classes that uh, you they carry functionalities, but they don't have any uh, properties. Like um, as the example that I have wrote for 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 a three four five class was to creating create a class called uh, C string to do the C string stuff that you want to do like for string header file and you could actually if you please create something like that so let's call it csdr then all the action of copy length allocate copy read stuff like that that you do they could be static functions and therefore when you want to actually use them you don't need to instantiate csdr anymore any place you include csdr in your code in your main code you can call all the functions using the uh, using the static uh, using the uh, class uh, name so you go CSDR copy and and then you do the string copy as you're supposed to do and then you go CSDR I don't know a read and that's gonna actually read a C string uh, in unlimited time so and um, uh, yeah so um, a, a good way uh, a valid way to use uh, functions to without use that, functions without yes. that. Yes. So basically, like stack functions, like even if like you don't have an instance of that object, you can still use it. Like anyone can use it as long as you have because that. Are, because because class. As, as we mentioned in class, as we mentioned as in class, these are class as methods, methods, not object methods. Not they object belong methods. to the class. They belong to the class, class, not an instance. And obviously, because okay. I don't want this to get created, I what, this I to get created what I will do, CSDR, I will go CSDR, and then I will go CSDR, uh, CSDR, 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 uh, it's delete. Uh, it's delete. Something like that. So I delete the like that. So I delete the construct. Sure that it's not going to get Make sure that it's not going to get transcribed. Or copy or whatever it calls. Or copy or that. whatever it copy and all that. All the things that it needs to be set. Uh, Sassini, uh, you had a question. You rose your head. Not me. It's it's right over here. It's us in here. Raise hand. Okay, sure. Okay, I'm lowering your hand then. All right. So that's that one. Uh, anonymous classes. We talked about it. Yes, Wilson. Yes, Wilson. Same rule applies for like static um variables, right? Yes. So if yes. you want these okay. things to use specific type of variable to do something, you can create a static variable in the C structure, C uh, in the CSTR in here, if needed. Okay. Uh, by the way, this uh, function, if if you like dynamic memory allocation, this is a good function. It actually reads a, um, a, a, a C string from the keyboard up to unlimited amount of uh, characters. So if you if you say like uh, uh, character pointer character pointer SDR is equal to read SDR is equal screen, to read my screen reads up to it reads up to nula and, and it resizes itself and, and yes, it resizes itself. itself yes we'll see what if i made the static function the static theory like private would i still be able to use it in like anywhere or is no, you use it, do i have to make, make it, it private you, you make can it use it in in public static in functions public of the static of the, functions of the class the, of the class Okay, but how I can't use it in directly from like a main function then. Of course, because it's private. Of course, because it's private. Okay. All right. So that's that. Another thing. So in here, I'm gonna say use of static. J I J K. Use of static functions. So if you have a utils thingy that you to carry around your utilities and you have functions that are just for sake of utility it would be a nice it's a nice idea to actually make it a static function we have so many static variables and stuff that we use in c++ and we used it so many times all those ios scope resolution stuff uh, that you're doing they are uh, static values inside a, inside a, inside a, a class all right 
forward declaration is the next thing forward declaration is is essentially we learned uh, we have a prototype for function we learned we have prototype for um, we have prototype for variables by using extern and now I'm teaching you prototypes for classes well, how do we use prototype for a classes um, usually this happens when chicken and the egg situation happens you don't know which one is coming first for example I have a a class person and the class, per class person has a title and then the title can be given to up to only up to 100 people therefore in title I have a pointer 100 pointers of persons this title was given to so if I want to create the person because person has a title I have to put the class title class person after the title but at the same time because class titer, title is being given to the person it needs to know what the person is so I have to bring that one back up when scenarios like this happen what you need to do is uh, what you need to do is to make one of the forward declare one of the classes that class should be the one that is either a reference or a pointer in the other class so in here as you see or I have pointers of persons when you have a pointer of a class the information inside the class is not needed to build a pointer a pointer is eight in byte all it needs to do that is supposed to point to a person it doesn't do anything else it doesn't instantiate a point person it doesn't know what the properties of the person is and so on and so forth therefore a forward declaration simply tells the title don't worry person is a class create a pointer out of it and then be on with it but if I bring the person at the top where it has a title which means it's not uh, a reference if I bring this person up this person up and forward declare the title instead this is going to be futile the reason is that the title needs to get built and the forward declaration of the class title has no information of the constructor of the title or the functionalities of the title therefore this is not possible so remember always put the class at the top that is using the other classes pointer or reference and forward declare it you have done this already in op244 in your project but uh, this is just a uh, reminder of it are we okay with this oh it's 129 i keep going all right uh, so that's that we are end of the session today and the next day you are going to come in we're going to actually talk about uh, which is in the lab we're going to talk about move constructors and move assignments and I'm going to set up the due date for your uh, uh, labs to be labs enough to time be so you can do it after your lab it after your lab and you'll open the submission for and workshop 2 part 2 pardon me pardon me and you'll open the submission for workshop yeah, 2 yeah, part yeah, 2 I'm going to open everything yeah, yeah I'm going to open everything today yes okay thanks all right all any right. other question any other question? Any question one? Any question two? Sir, there's a question about the quizzes in the chat. Oh. It says about the quizzes, question mark, question mark. What about the quizzes? Pravjot, you don't have a microphone? Microphone. You have a microphone. Either that or I'm going to make the first quiz. <laughs> okay. Uh, either that, you need one of those noise cancellation microphones. But, anyways, so um, uh, either it's going to, I don't think I'm going to give two quizzes on Friday. I think I'm going to make quiz number one offline, I mean online, not in person and the other one is going to be regular so um, are, are you going to get a posting saying that do the quiz uh, on this day by the end of this day so you do the quiz one like that 
uh, at home and then you're going to do the quiz too in class what's out um father i have a question yes uh i have problem to submit workshop one part one um it wasn't submitted but the submission was closed oh, will you be able I'll, I'll open up the submission so you're going to have okay. time for to, to i'll set the due dates for proper time so you can do it workshop one and workshop two's uh, uh deadlines are going to be extended nicely okay thank you all right anything else all right everyone have yourself a beautiful day and uh, i'll talk to you soon bye everyone